All right, hello. Today we're gonna do something a little different. I am gonna try to climb ladder because we're really, really close to Mythic right now. And to do that, I think I'm going to switch gears, come off of Mono Red, and we're gonna try this Rakdos Croxa deck. Um, I have a little bit of practice with it, but it is largely a work in progress. Uh, we can take a quick look at it. It's, uh, we're running the full place out of Blood Chief's Thirst. Awesome removal in this format. We're running two copies of Agonizing Remorse to disrupt the opponent and yoink something of great importance or perhaps snipe something from the graveyard. We're running three copies of Heartless Act, which is some of the best instant speed removal in the format. There are some problematic creatures that Heartless Act doesn't do too much against, but there's enough of them that Heartless Act is effective versus to warrant its position in the deck. Um, we're running four copies of Mire Triton. This card is crucial to the deck. Ours being a Croxa deck, um, we want to be able to fill our graveyard, and Mire Triton does that beautifully. Robber the Rich, we're running four copies of. This is a little bit of a weird inclusion in this list. It doesn't really synergize with the deck well, but he's just so powerful and annoying. He may come out as I go, but I've liked his inclusion thus far. Running just a single copy of Shredded Sails, a little bit of utility to take out Great Henges and Ember Cleaves and all kinds of annoying artifacts, or just deal with an annoying Rogue, of which there are no shortage of in the format currently. Uh, of course, we're running four copies of Croxa, Titan of Hunger, uh, Death's Hunger, excuse me? I always want to say Hunger's Death. I don't think, <laughs> that doesn't sound great, so I'm going to wean myself from doing that. And we're going to pronounce it properly, Titan of Death's Hunger. Still sounds strange to me. Um, he's the star of the deck. He's the one we want to get in the graveyard and then escape ASAP as soon as possible. Um, between Meyer Triton and Timurek Calls the Dead, it's pretty easy to fill the yard. It's pretty easy to get him in the yard. And for the most part, pretty easy to escape him. Um, still waiting on those Rakdos pathways. Hopefully they'll be in the next set. Um, two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing as a, an extra modal land that doesn't necessarily have to come into play tapped and can also serve as solid removal in the late game. Uh, moving over to the three drafts, we're running, the, of course, four copies of Timurek Calls the Dead to fill the yard and potentially get us a creature when in need. Uh, full plus set of Bone Crusher Giant because we are playing red. <laughs> and you don't not include Giant when you're playing red because it's just too bonkers. And a single copy of Loris of the Dream Den in there primarily to recur Croxa or get back on Meyer Triton and keep filling the yards. There's lots of two drops he can snatch, including Robber the Rich. Um, but he's not so integral to our game plan that we want to have more than one of this guy in the deck. Two copies of Agadim's Awakening. The other modal land that does not necessarily have to come into play tapped, although it can. Agadim's Awakening is not particularly powerful in this deck, but, I mean, the ability to play it as a land makes it a little more preferable than something like, say, Call of the Death Dweller. So, thus, we have two copies and occasionally it can be clutch, but we don't have any one-drop creatures in the deck, and we only have a single four-drop creature. So more often than not, you'll play this a land, but sometimes you'll get back something useful, and it's just always nice to have options, right? This deck has no shortage of options. Uh, moving into the four-drops, speaking of options, we have Hagra Mauling, two copies of. You can play it as a little overpriced removal spell, or a tap land when needed. If you get one of these in the opening hand, or when I get one of these in the opening hand, I'm usually pretty keen on just playing it out tapped. Um, two copies of Liliana, Waker of the Dead. Um, synergizes pretty well with a deck that wants to fill the yard and punishes the opponent for not having cards. Um, cumulative with Crocs' effects, so it can be quite the beating when you have Liliana and a escaped Crocs on the board. If the opponent has no answers, then they have no chance of winning. A single copy of Rankle, Master Pranks. Rankle or Master Prankle. Not sure about this inclusion, honestly, but I think he is a 
pretty awesome card, and running a one of him feels pretty good for the time being. This, of course, is uh, as much a flex slot as the deck has, honestly. And if you wanted to experiment um, with anything else, really, <laughs> by pulling out Rankle, you might consider that. But for now, I am testing Rankle. We'll see how he does. Um, the mana base, a little bit more thoughtful than the average mana base. Um, you really want to be able to escape Croxa on turn four if that opportunity arises. And for that reason, we are running a full complement of inefficient duels, we'll call them, right? Fable Passage, not, not necessarily bad, but not necessarily great either. Can help fill the gap. A requirement for crux is escape whether that be a swamp or mountain uh, and of course temples of malice they're temples you know they're duels but they're tap lands so the scry helps soften the blow of it being tap no matter what however you really need to have them here you really do in fact i'm i'm almost i'm i'm, I'm considering um, bringing in two of the other one, the the other tap land, the one that gives you life. I can't recall the name of it right now. Bad me. Anyway, and then just five swamps, or I'm sorry, five mountains, six swamps, and a single castle locked lane. Um, maybe, yeah, actually, you know what? We're going to change that right now because we have the power to do that. I'm going to go down a swamp, go up a locked lane. Um... Yeah, they always, you know, with only five swamps, it's uh, it's pretty likely that you'll get a locked way and that you can't play on tap, but it is a very powerful card, so let's try that. Okay, without further ado, let's pop into the, the ladder and see if we can climb. Okay. Man. Okay, so I think this is like the ninth time in a row that I've not gone first. So, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I don't like this luck. Anyway, this is an ultra slow hand, especially with the opponent going first. I kind of hate it, honestly. We're going to take a mulligan. Okay, this is so much worse. <laughs> this is so much worse. This is so bad. Like, oh my god, this is a land. <laughs> so, I guess we only need one red mana to get this hand to roll on, so let's keep it. We will, however, pitch Robber the Rich. In the very likely event, we don't get that red mana off the top. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so definitely got to do that. Ginger Brute. What's the opponent running? Some kind of auras, maybe the old school auras, all that glitters deck. They say old school, you know, from standard 2021. <laughs> okay, we're about to get smacked by Ginger Brew. Transcendent Envoy. All right, so I think now is pretty good. We could wait until they lure, bring Loris into their hand to do Agonizing Remorse. But let's hedge our bet. We, we have Heartless Act in hand for Loris if need be. And let's hedge our bets that we maybe get red. We could also get rid of Loris that way. So we play the Agonizing Remorse now. Wow, none of this is very exciting. What's... Transcendent of do he makes auras cost less. The real danger here is Sentinel's Eyes, because if it's recursion, so let's exile it. Solid footing could be bad too, but I mean it's not coming back, right? Not like Sentinel's Eyes does. Now they bought the Loris. Holy moly, that's a lot of bone crushers with no red mana. Yeah, well, we did keep the hand. We have no one to blame on ourselves. <laughs> this is atrocious, though. Transcendent Envoy pecking at our life total. Here comes Loris. 
And there goes Loris. Unless they got some kind of God's willing type effect. Nah, it's gone. All right. Oh my God. Stop it. Stop this. <laughs> Oh man, what is this deck? This is a diamond class deck with Knight's Pledge in it? I guess I shouldn't criticize because look at us, we're losing to it. Um, okay. This is going to mill over our red, line, our red mana source, so you know what's going to happen, right? Watch it. Here it goes. There it goes. Oh. I'm speechless. I'm sad. Oh. Alright. Does that save us in any way? Heck no, it don't. Nothing saves us now. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. It's not even worth bluffing, man. Good game. Okay, game one didn't go good for us. <laughs> no, man. No. Oh, what do we return? Oh my god, is it the same deck? Is it the same deck? Definitely want lands here. So I'm not feeling nearly as hopeless as I did with the last one. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? I'm kind of keen on taking out this Owl State of Life's bounty now before it can be used. Opponent with the Basri cat. My sand will protect you. Mm. Protective sand. Okay, what do we do? Basri can now give Daxos invent or er, instructable, so Mario Triton's not nearly as threatening. The mana efficient play is to drop Timoret Calls the Dead, see if we can't get Proxit in there, but the likelihood the opponent has. A glass casket or some nonsense like that is pretty strong. We play Timurite Calls the Dead. I think that's the play. I don't know. That's the one I'm doing. Okay, can't even get a Creech out of it. My goodness. Linden. Gross. That means Heliod's next turn, right? Opponents definitely got him. Why wouldn't they have them? Look at this. This is nonsense. All right. Okay, the Heartless Act would have been good last turn. Oh, there's Croxa. No, we don't want to exile the Croxa. So, kind of like the idea of just jamming Croxa, honestly. Yeah. Let's do it. Heartless Act is a little bit useless for the time being, so this feels right. We could double Meyer Triton. That's that's an option, too. But I think this is what we ought to be doing. And then maybe Heartless Act can be useful by removing counters in the next turn. It's kind of combat shenanigans. We do get to... Get, a re get rid of the opponent's worst card here. Bite is one. That's not a bad card. So the other thing they're holding must be good. It's going to be Heliod. It's going to be. Bazari Cat set to ultimate. I mean... What are they going to do? They're going to fight as one, right? Of course they are. No, I'm not going to block that. Think I'm a fool? Do you think me a fool? 
We get exactly zero life off that. Hmm. And now Basri can be hit. Potentially. Yeah. We gotta go for it. That fight is one about to get popped out here. Potentially. Likely. Oh. Never mind. I talk like I know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Hmm. Never mind. I don't know why I forgot Heartless Act can't hit countered creatures. Bosri's gonna get the ultimate. It's gonna be gnarly. What do we do here? There's nothing. There's nothing we can do here. This is the absolute worst feeling. Let's, uh, let's put on my Trident. This has the threat of death. What's Bowser's ultimate do? Yeah. Yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> Yeah, there's the uh, the icing on the poop cake. Heliod. Oh God. None of this feels great. Not a single thing of it. We could escape Crocs again. Feels stupid, but what else are we gonna do? Let's get that card out. Sure. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back on you. Yeah, this feels like a waste of time though, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. So, why did we lose that game? Aside from my bad choices. Oh, man, folks. I'm telling you. It's not supposed to be like this. I have to mulligan this. I'm gonna try it, right? One red mana is all we need to get going. We got all the time in the world. <laughs> Mono red. Alright. So my Trident might not be terrible here, but probably just gonna suss out removal. And that'll pretty much be it. We could bloodthirst the fervent champion, but that feels silly. Or we could cycle shredded sails. Looking for that red source. Um, let's just drop my trident. It'll get us a little bit of life. Mill away our land, our red land. <laughs> it always happens. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, we should have just cycled the shredded sails. Oh well. It's been that kind of night. There's some red mana. But she's thirst is pretty sweet. And yeah, we'll have to drop Triton. Guess I should have thought about Blood Chief's thirst, but whatever. I mean, whatever, honestly. Hmm. Nah, not gonna block. Hmm. So. Shredded Sails can take out Phoenix of Ash. Fervent Champion can take... Or, I'm sorry, Blood Chief's Thirst can take out Fervent Champion. But they'll still be able to Ember Cleave on the next turn. So, let's assume that's the plan. Blood Chief's Thirst on Fervent Champion. That doesn't seem good, does it? But it's our... That's the only thing we can do here.
it will reduce Anax's power by one. It's not much, but and then we hang back. We're looking for Embercleave that we can shred its sail. It'll be especially sweet if they put it on Anax. Expecting to first strike through our Triton. Uh, that may be... No, no. Yeah. Let's go to blockers. There it is. It's not the uh, most amazing play, but it's something. Oh, wait. Yeah, well, he's already blocking. All right, destroy target artifact. They do have Embrith on the field, so a land makes their board even more deadly. What can we do here? Everybody grab a leg. Oh, thank you. So Luris can get back nothing, because we don't have any one-drop creatures in this deck. Liliana could hmm, put out Phoenix of Ash. That still feels pretty bad, but she could also draw the attention of the opponent. I don't know. I feel like I have no good choices here. Let's just try this. The best thing about we could force a discard. Let's try that. We are about to eat a bolo of damage if they got that fourth land, though. Or if they were holding one. Either way, it's mono red. We're gonna eat a bolo of damage. Anyway, you slice it. Hopefully, they go after Liliana. Do it. Need to kill her. There you go. All right. So we survived another turn. Rankle. Good, but not great. Roxa feels like the right choice. Let's go after our sorceries and stuff because we can bring back creatures later with Agadim's Awakening. Fire. That's another Robert. Robert gonna yoink two of our things. Hagra mauling. That's unfortunate. Ooh. Okay, that's something. So, do we do have a Meyer Tree? Yes. Okay, so. Good line of play here. We do Loris. Grab a Triton. I think it's probably safe to attack here. I think we have to. Get that card out of their hand. What could it possibly be? How much damage do we take if we... We could potentially eat... A lot. I feel like we have to do this. I don't know. I'm not mathing right now. It was a Torbran. Another land, of course, enables Castle Emrith. And Timurat calls the dead now. We have to do this wag stuff. We just gotta do it. Hopefully that card in their hand is not a shock or something. Thing like that, or even a spike field has it. We need Luris. It's Timurat calls the dead. <laughs> All right. I'm down with that. That's actually pretty good because now we can rankle into Triton. Hmm. Do we want to rankle though? Because we can hold him back. I think we actually hold him back. And we're just going to swing with Croxa, deplete the opponent's hand. 
bonk for six by a Triton. See what happens. Making zombies. What do we got? So down to do all this naughty stuff. Just down for it. I don't even care. Yes, all right, we did it. <laughs> Finally, gosh, guys, I've been so hungry for a win all night. I was in tier one halfway up, and it's just been loss after devastating loss. But there, we did it. We got one. Holy crap, we get to go first. I've been waiting all night. The sun was still up the last time I went first. Is now 942. I'm happy. And this hand seems keepable. Or do we want to play it out? Okay. Let's start with the Temple of Mouse. Swamp. Um, one, we already got a lot of land. We got a lot of land. Including two black sources. So let's bottom that. Run it with the charger. Do we want to just get Crocs in the graveyard here or hold up Bone Crusher Giant? Let's stop rather. Um let's just let's just get this train a rolling. We have the lands, we just need to fill the graveyard now. So with that in mind, I may actually... Hmm, so Heartless Act is good. Say we hold that up. And pass. We have either Stomp or Heartless Act at our disposal to take care of any pests, like Annex. So we could... Because he will be 4 or 3. We want to minimize the number of silly things that Anax makes. So... Let's go ahead and blow this charger away now. We'll use Heartless Act on the next turn. Anax will replace himself with only one token. Which is preferable here. Although we might... Is it prudent to wait? Or should we do this now? I think we do it now. I guess because, yeah, he makes a token. It might have been right to wait. However, I don't want any weird shenanigans. Actually, maybe we should have waited because we might have been able to get him to Emberclave it. Anyway, we'll see another Annex. Take two. Okay. We're running low on stuff. Any creatures in the graveyard? We do have a Croxa. So lure us into Croxa is an option. It's not a bad option, honestly. Or we could Shatter Skull smashing a few things. I kind of want a Croxa in case that's Embercleave in hand. So uh, let's make this swap, right? Let's go grab swap. was a cleave. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing we did that. <laughs> However, we're not out of the woods yet, not by any stretch. 
opponent able to annihilate us with Castle Embrith there. I think we do this. If they grabbed another Embercleave, there was nothing we could have done. We are far from being able to escape Croxa, unfortunately. Okay, opponent just letting it go. It means they want to play the card they have. Whatever it may be. Robert. All right. Ooh, a Robert of our own. Which actually pans out pretty well. Rocketeam's Awakening. Looking pretty cute this second. So we could potentially Shatter Skull for four. I don't think that's the best thing, though. So what do we do? I think we play Shatter Skull out with the intent to Agadeem's. Play out Bone Crusher. Play out Robert. Try not to die. Well, yeah, that's what we'll do. Looking at, at the very least, an F ton of damage courtesy of Castle Emrith. Would not be surprised to see the opponent swing with everything. Here they come. Um, yeah, this feels good enough. I guess I could have swapped those. Yeah, that was kind of dumb. Man, I need to think things through, right? Didn't have to trade my Robert for a Robert, but here we are. Okay. What's the plan? We could Agadims. We need to Agadims. We need Loris's life gain. And we could Croxa. Hmm. Feel like we need the extra body though, honestly. So this is the best we can do, I think. Dead to a cleave. Dead to a lot of things. Removal probably gets us too, because we need Loris' life gain sweetness. Everything's coming. Everything's coming at it. Uh, well, actually, I'll let that thing through. Whatever. So not the best scenario for us, but not the worst, I guess. End up gaining one life as it is. Net. Oh, never mind. Rimmel Rock. We still gain one life, but all that stunk. So we can escape Roxa, no? Probably the right thing to do, even though Rimrock is out on an adventure. We can escape Croxa and hold up stop. That actually works out pretty good, so leave the good creatures. Leave the good creatures. Take out everything else. And end. Oh that yeah, gosh. Rimrock was on an adventure. I just said it with my mouth and I forgot. So Croxa will not actually discard anything. We have double removal in hand, but we cannot pop them both off EOT. One has to go this turn, one can go on the next. On it with just a land. All right. I don't hate my chances this second. Kind of want to just get rid of this thing, though. Ooh, tricky, tricky. Okay, Liliana. So I could actually remove their board. Kind of love that. Kind of love it. Seize the day, my minions. I grow strong. You grow weak. 
Not out of the woods, because Mono Red been known to pack a hasty creature, but it is looking good now. Oof. Opponent with the little fervent champion that could. Almost. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. My faith is just restored in Rakdos Croxa for the time being. Wow. This is a disgusting opening hand. I kind of hate it. Yeah, I want a mulligan this. This one's better. What do we bottom? May regret it, but I think Shredded Sails is kind of a little outside of what we want to do here. Oof. Hateful Idolin. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to just kill that now, honestly. We do give up Crocs on turn two, but I'm okay with that. Opponent a mono black, Skyclave Shade. Potential nasty critter. Robert. Do we care about Robert? I think we just kind of want to find good land for our Croxa now. So we have the blackness there. We need one red source to escape Croxa. Which, if the opponent's not running cling to dust, will be our very best path to victory. We're going to take a little bit of damage from Skyclave Shade here. Maybe more if they demonic embrace it or something silly like that. But it will go down really nice to Heartless Act, maybe in the next turn if we need to do that. Ooh, a Femia. Opponent's running that kind of stuff. So they're going to get a little zombie. Kind of wish I was running Extinction Event. I don't think I have any in this deck. Double Croxa. So, yeah, we're going to eat a ton of damage, right? There's not actually any way for us to escape Crocs at the moment. So, I think we pass. Instead of playing Timurat Calls the Dead, we're going to hold up Heartless Act. And they are swinging. Yeah, we don't like Ephemia. Let me see a village rights. Yep. All right. I'm gassing back up. Well, dealing five points of damage to us. It's looking pretty good if you're on the other side of the table right now. A Meyer Triton. Skyclave Shade just beaten down on us. Timurat calls the dead as a potential, as is Luris. Luris, of course, would give us three points of life gain, which might actually spell the difference between life and death here. But let's, let's Timurat. We do get a zombie. That dies. Seven points of damage coming our way. That hurts so bad. An opponent with a hateful idol. And, and oh, yeah, we need to do that. We need to do it. 
This is all super sad stuff. It doesn't matter what's in their hand. We gotta play for survival this second. Yeah. Opponent besting us with their aggro assault. Sends us packing. GG. Hmm. Well, I feel like the deck is better than how I was playing it or how my luck was even for the most part. I think the deck can do better. So it's not a write-off for me. And I do I do enjoy playing it. I didn't run up against rogues at all in that run, which this deck tends to do pretty well against. Um. Anyway... That's my version of Ragdos Croxa. It could probably stand to be tweaked, and I honestly think I might do that if I'm going to continue using this on ladder. I think there needs to be a few changes here. I'm just not sure what. The shell is pretty good. It's running Mara Triton. It's running Timurit Calls the Dead. It's running Croxa. But maybe I'll take a look at some other lists and see if there's anything that just sets off a light bulb, you know, about what to do to this deck to tune it a little a little better than it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if it's not too much to ask, go ahead and give this video a like. And if you want to see more of this stuff delivered to you on a more regular basis, subscribe. Subscriptions are my greatest motivator. Thanks again for watching and have a great night.